Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're going to go out and play. Hey, welcome back everyone. If you've been following the build of the Camp Easy Teardrop, uh, you'll know that we've been working on the door for quite a while and the uh, last episode we finished up the first door um, the second door is just a, a carbon copy it's a repeat of the first one so I'm not going to take the time to videotape that um, but I did knock that second door out this morning in the workshop so we're getting ready to start on the uh, the door latch build and assembly which I think would be pretty cool because it's a DIY design I wanted to see um, if I could, you know, build my own version at a low cross, you know, low price, low cost. So, um, hope you enjoy that portion of the uh, build series. But today, <clears throat> we have some unseasonably warm weather here in East Tennessee. It's supposed to get up to uh, 61 degrees, and this is January 6th, so that's not very common in the middle of January. So, me and my flying buddies are chomping at the bit to get out and enjoy this beautiful day. So, let's go do some flying. <laughs> What a wonderful day, hanging out with my buddies in the middle of January with 60 degree weather. Uh, that's awesome. Probably won't get many days like this, so I'll take them when I can get them. Calm winds, just wonderful for, for flying. Had a wonderful time. But now it's time to get back to the shop and pick up where we left off. Okay. I had to take a detour. Look at this incredible, incredible sunset. This is just unbelievable. I saw it coming down the road and I thought, wow, I've got to stop. Luckily, there was a nice uh, parking area in front of this bridge where I could stop and shoot this right fast. This is just amazing. Anyway, just a little detour before we get back in the workshop. Hey, we are back in the workshop, and today is door latch day. Pretty excited about this. Uh, we just got the doors built and hung on the camper. Now we want to put the latches on. Uh, I'm not really going to consider this to be part of the door build series. Uh, I want to keep this separate because this is, you know, a little bit of my own design as far as the latch and lock that I'm going to put on there. So this is kind of a standalone video. Um, but basically what I've done is I wanted to find an inexpensive way to build door locks and door latches that will lock from both the inside and out for the teardrop. Um, I looked at the cab locks, the square cab locks that a lot of folks use, and as I understand they work really well, but those things are expensive. Um, I wanted to cut the cost back a little bit, and personally, I kind of like the black color of this uh, this hardware. I think it'll match the interior of the camper. So let me show you what I've uh, what I've come up with. So here's how this is going to work. Obviously, I'll be drilling a hole in the door, and this T-handle um, will be put through that hole. This 5 16th square shank will be plunged in that hole, and then I'll have, uh, I'll have the T-handle on the outside that I can grab to you know, open and to close the door with. This is a lockable handle, and I managed to get both locks key to lock, so I only have to have one key to work both sides. It actually came with two sets of keys. That's kind of nice. Um, the inside of the door, I have this D handle that I'll, I'll grab to close the door. Then when the door is closed, I'll turn it and that'll latch the door. And then I'm going to use one of these El Cheapo um, 
gate locks that I'll basically just plunge into a hole that I'll drill in the end of this D handle. So when this is plunged in here, it'll keep you from being able to rotate the uh, D handle back and forth. And so you've got a lock on the inside now. I couldn't think of anything any more inexpensive and easy to, uh, to install than this. Um, and like I say, if a part does break, I can always uh, just run down the road and buy a replacement part. You know, if I'm out on a trip somewhere and it uh, breaks down, you know, there's always gonna be a Lowe's or a little hardware store somewhere, and they're probably gonna have a part that I can use to uh, get this back going. So I've got the key in here. I'll unlock it, turn a quarter of a turn, and you'll notice one negative thing. When you turn it a quarter of a turn, you can now see the uh, screw holes on the outside of the uh, T-handle base. And the screws it came with are just a, um, a wood screw. Uh, it's got a combination square and Phillips head on it. So theoretically, if somebody was able to, uh, to turn this quarter of a turn for whatever reason, they'd have access to the screws and they could unscrew this thing. However, the, uh, the D handle on the inside is gonna be set screwed in place. So they probably wouldn't be able to get it open anyway. But just in case, I will probably come back at some point and replace these screws with some security head screws. Um, if you don't know what those are, just type in security head screw in uh, Google and uh, there's all kinds of clever um, designs for these. I actually have a security driver set that I can, uh, can use on it. But um, yeah, should be pretty cool, so let's get started. So I made a wooden template that matches up with the oval base of the T-handle. And I'm gonna use that to drill this board that's about the same thickness as the wall of my camper. So I have, I've started a half inch hole, I'll drill that on through. And this will be for the two uh, uh, screws that fasten it to the wall but this is about an inch thick and that's about the uh, thickness of the wall of my camper so i just want to put this whole thing together and try it before i start drilling holes in my actual camper wall So what I've done here is mock up the door of the camper. Put the T-handle on the outside of the door. This piece of wood serves as the door. And I put the D-handle on the inside of the door. You'll notice that the D-handle has a long side and a short side. The long side overhangs the edge of the door and strikes the plate or the catch on the wall of the camper. The short side has the hole that I just drilled that will line up with this inexpensive gate lock. So whenever you pull the door shut with the handle and you turn it to latch it, now all you have to do is push the lock over and let it go. And if somebody tries to open it from the outside, they're not gonna be able to. I just put a level on the camper to make sure the camper's set and level. And what I want to do is I'm gonna put a level on these screw holes on the T-handle template because when the T-handle is, is closed, I want it to be um, horizontal to the ground. That way, if it's straight up and down, the wind will be hitting it more, probably won't be a problem, but I think it'd be more streamlined if it's this way. So I'm just gonna line the, um, the level up with these holes and use that as a guide. If you don't have one of these little punches <clears throat> that makes a, um, an indentation in wood or metal to start your, um, your drill with, I tell you, these things are wonderful. If you uh, don't have one, you'll find that your drill will start walking and this will keep it from walking.
So if you're using a pilot bit to drill holes with, you'll notice there's a little uh, point in the middle and the two ears on the edge. The point guides the bit and the, uh, the ears on the edge uh, do all the work actually cutting the hole. Um, I like to go in just far enough to where the pilot point pokes out the other side and then stop and then go to the other side and start drilling from that side. And I find that if I do that, it makes nice clean edges on the hole on both the inside and out. I'm just gonna temporarily install this and I'm gonna use some drywall screws, some short ones. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I, drill, I drilled the hole all the way through the wall. I believe I'm gonna install some blind nuts or some T-nuts on the other side and use like a machine screw with some Loctite and may switch to a security head screw as well. But I'm just gonna put this in temporarily just to try it out. That looks pretty nice and clean. I like that look and I like it being horizontal. Going down the road, I think that'll be a nice, uh, nice sleek look. So I had some 3 16 aluminum stock, some pretty hard aluminum, and I just uh, cut it on a bandsaw and drilled six holes in it. And I put it over here on the wall, just on the inside of the uh, door frame. And that's gonna be the catch for the D handle on the uh, door. So let's see what this thing looks like. You'll notice I put a little piece of rubber D uh, seal on there. Eventually that'll be all the way around the door. I just put a small piece on there as a trial. But here's the door latch. You'll grab this handle. It'll be with the other hand. You'll grab this handle. You'll pull the door closed. You'll rotate it. And this will hit the um, aluminum catch that's on the inside of the wall. And then when you want to lock it, you just use the gate lock. It goes in the hole that we drilled. And now from the outside, you'll see that you can't open it up. So there's your lock. Now, the only thing I don't like about it is there's a little slop, and I think I drilled the hole for the uh, 5 16 shank just a little heavy. I may fill that back up with epoxy and then re-drill it a little smaller, and then on the other door, certainly I'll just drill it smaller to begin with. But overall, I think this is going to work well. So that's the DIY door latch. Um, pretty simple project, probably a three or four hour job for both doors combined. Um, some may be able to knock it out a little quicker. And about 30 bucks, give or take, for both doors combined. Now I did have to buy, uh, you know, some aluminum scrap stock somewhere. Um, you should be able to pick that up for, you know, maybe three or four dollars at, you know, at your local uh, metal supplier. Not that big of a deal. Um, but it's a simple project and there's probably not a whole lot on the latch to fail. But if something did fail on a camping trip, you should be able to run to a local home center, run into the, you know, the next town and buy parts for it. So that's a pretty handy feature. Um, I'm, I'm could not be happier with it. It turned out great. It looks great. Now, there are a couple things that I need to go back and do, like I mentioned earlier. I need to trim off that 5 16 shank that's sticking into the cabin. Uh, don't want to get caught on that, so I'll trim that off flush. And then I need to replace a couple of the wood screws on the T-handle with some security screws. But other than that, it's, it's a pretty much finished installation, and I'm very happy with it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, appreciate you hitting that button. And if you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. So until next time, take care and we'll see you later.